All right, let me bring in my panel now to discuss all of this. CNN political commentators David Swerdlick and Matt Lewis. Also with me, Jim Kessler. Uh, he is the former legislative policy director for Senator Chuck Schumer. And Brian McGuire is the former chief of staff for Senator Mitch McConnell. Uh, welcome to all of you. Good to see you. All right, so David, you first. You know, we've got some new CNN polling, um, not completely uh, positive in the direction of what's happening here. 56% of people polled uh, saying that avoiding a shutdown was more important than DACA, while 34% said continuing DACA was more important than avoiding the shutdown. But then here we are. Um, so what do you say to the numbers? So I think, Fred, there's a poll that you can find whatever position you want to take in this <laughs> issue. If you're the Democrats and you want to fight for DACA, polling shows, there's polls out from Quinnipiac, CNN, Washington Post this week, they all say that Americans overwhelmingly want the dreamers to stay. On the other hand, those numbers you just read from the CNN poll, right, narrowly, Americans say it's not important not enough for a shutdown, shutdown or for not uh, reauthorizing chip. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're the president, he's got 40% approval in the averages, maybe 38% in some polls. That's not good, but he was only at 45 a year ago today. Mm. So the bottom hasn't fallen out on him. So everyone can find a number that justifies their stance at this moment. And then, Brian, you know, this just into to CNN now, a Democratic source saying that Senator Dick Durbin attended a meeting on DACA talks and said McConnell, and I'm quoting now, McConnell is scared to death. Uh, end quote, of Trump and limited by Paul Ryan's agenda. So what's your response on that, this kind of, you know, leadership by fear or vice versa? Well, I can guarantee that Mitch McConnell is not scared to death right now. I think he's fairly serene about this situation. Um, I think the polls that were just cited is good reason for him to be serene about this, namely that a third of the country thinks it's worth doing this over this issue, and about three-fourths think that it's foolish. And so Schumer shutting the government down over this issue seems to me a completely pointless exercise and one that Republicans generally are sort of perplexed by. So it's interesting, Matt, because you know it wasn't that long, just weeks ago, uh, you know, in that bipartisan meeting at the White House, it was very clear. I mean, Feinstein made it very clear that, hey, we want to address immigration, DACA first. You know, the president had a different interpretation of what she was saying, but then tried to seemingly bring people together to say, something is going to happen. And no matter what, I will sign anything and I will take the heat. What changed? Well, look, I think that the president is a, a unreliable negotiating partner. It, you know, uh, it's really hard to cut a deal because depending on the last person to to him, he may come down differently. So, uh, you know, in defense of Democrats, uh, they may argue, like, look, we have to insist on DACA as part of the CR because we don't know that we can negotiate an immigration deal. You know, it's, it's, so that's a fair point for Democrats to make. I think, however, uh, that they may normally, there's, there's a skew where Republicans generally historically get blamed for shutdowns, and there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. But one of the problems Democrats have this time is that DACA is not imminently in danger. So, in other words, uh, you know, there's no danger that dreamers are going to be deported tomorrow if this isn't fixed. And so, uh, why would you sort of force a government shutdown in order to prevent something that, yes, it's possible that uh, a month from now the Supreme mm. Court could intervene, but as of now, it's not an imminently, you know, urgent issue. So, Jim, tell that to dreamers, though, who are, you know, right. really scared to, to death uh, over what is going to happen next. And some sort of protections is what many of these Democrats, I guess, were looking for by trying to squeeze this into this measure. Absolutely. What went wrong? I mean, Did they overplay their hand? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure this is one of the points that Senator Schumer made when he talked to President Trump. This is a problem of Trump's making. You know, he's the one that rescinded DACA several months ago. He's the one that said we're going to have a solution. He's, you know, the ticking time bomb, it ends in March, which is very, very close. Mm -hmm. And look, President Trump had an agreement twice in January, you know, in which it seemed like that there was a deal and one, you know, including yesterday with Chuck Schumer. And this isn't a game of poker. It's more of a game of bridge. You need to have a partner. And frankly, Donald mm -hmm. Trump's playing like the dummy in this one. And he's just been very, very unreliable. And I think when it comes to the blame game, and I know that's a Washington parlor trick, that's why I think Donald Trump is the one who's going to be in trouble on this. Mm. And, you know, there are a lot of lives at stake yeah. here, whether we're talking about dreamers, whether we're talking about...
850,000 government workers who are worried about when they're going to get their next paycheck. But it's not, you know, I mean, if you're going to call it a game, you know, it's also a game of some really insulting bad language coming out of the White House. You know, we hear, um, you know, Sarah Huckabee Sanders talk about, you know, this is not about legislation, but, you know, she's calling people losers here. Right. You have the losers comment in the statement last night. This is on top of the s-hole comments from last week that were right. reported out of a closed door meeting with the president. I think it's Demo like a game of insults. It's now. a game of insults. Uh, and I think that Senator Schumer actually played it to perfection last night when he made his last statement on the floor. He not only said, look, uh, the Democrats are united, except for those few that that he essentially let in his caucus mm -hmm. vote uh, vote the other way from his party because they're in tough red states and facing re-election. Mm -hmm. But he laid out, look, I spoke to President Trump yesterday face to face and I put border wall funding on the table and still couldn't get a deal. And he said, I wrote it down. He said, it's their responsibility to govern, referring to the to the Republicans, and they failed. That was Schumer last night. S Senator McConnell, Senator Trump so far haven't had uh, a robust answer to that charge, even though, yes, there is peril for Democrats mm -hmm. on this point. Can I make one mm -hmm. more quick yeah. point, Fred? Just to, to, just to Brian's point, I think the reason I agree with you that Senator McConnell is probably not nervous at this point about his position, but I think Democrats had to do this. They had to show Republicans that they would take a hostage. They don't want to shoot the hostage. Mm. They had to show that they would take a hostage because Republicans have been doing it to them mm. for several years, and this was their opportunity. But then five Republicans voting against this from states where Trump carried it. So, I mean, this isn't a giant gamble, is it? I think it's a huge gamble on the Democrats' part because if you read the New York Times story this morning, it's clear that Democrats are hoping that in November people forget about the shutdown. Mm. That's what they're gambling, that people forget about this. And they feel like they need to do this right now to appease their base. But hopefully by November, other voters in these red states will have forgotten about it. Mm. And that to me shows where the leverage is here, and it's mm. on the Republican side. Ten months clearly. to go, right, roughly, mm -hmm. before that. All right, we'll find out um, how much American voters will or won't forget at this juncture. All right, thanks so much, everyone. All right, live pictures right now of the marches taking place across the country. Images